Hey everyone, it's James here, Fit RV, and I'm okay. I slept all night, I'm gonna work all day. And today, we're going to be tackling a wiring project. And I'm gonna call this like a, a locator switch in your RV, or a warning switch, or even maybe a nightlight switch. So, let me explain what I'm gonna do. Do you ever have a situation where you want a lighted switch, but you want the light to come on when the switch is off? Now think about where this might come in handy. Maybe you have something like a storage compartment and it's very dark in there. There's a light, but it's so dark that you can't see the black light switch. That might be an instance where you'd want the switch lit up when the lights were off. Same if you're looking for like maybe a night light. You know, when the lights are off, you want a little glow from the switch. Okay, fine. But the situation I'm going to use it for has to do with our Winnebago Echo. And I've got a very awful diagram of a Winnebago Echo here. Now, for those of you who don't know, the first generation of the Winnebago Echoes, which is what we have, they have a pump to pump gray water from the bathroom sink and shower. And I've just drawn the, the shower here, but you can imagine there's a sink there too. The draining situation is the same. So there's a drain right here. And this pump is activated by a sensor. So when this drain detects water, the pump turns on. To go, it's literally what it sounds like and starts pumping water back into the gray tank. And that's fine. And normally, 99% of the time, you want to leave that switch on because you don't want to have to think every time you use the bathroom sink or whatever that, you know, you don't want water pooling up around your ankles because you forgot to turn the pump switch on. So most of the time, you want to leave it on. It's not a bad design, but you can run into a problem if you park on an incline. So, so do the camera tilty thing. Okay, so let's say you parked nose up, right? Well, in that case, the water is going to run towards the back of the van, and then it's going to pool in this place here where the, where the sensor is. And that is going to start the pump running, except the pump is uphill from the water. It can't even get to the water. And so it's just going to for like 30 minutes. And normally when you park for the night, you level up somewhat, you know, and you don't have that situation. But let's say you pull into like a grocery store parking lot and it's crooked. You may have that situation happen and you don't want the pump to just run all the time. So now it's a simple matter to put in a switch to just kill the power to the pump. And a lot of people have done that. But what I want is a switch that lights up kind of red saying, hey, the pump is off so that it's painfully obvious every time the pump is off, and we remember to turn it back on because most of the time we want that pump left on. It's not going to be running. It'll just be waiting for the sensor input. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, it takes, you'd use the same kind of switch for all those scenarios I described, like a locator switch or a nightlight or this pump, hey, dummy, you left the pump off kind of switch. It takes a special kind of switch. It's called an SPDT, which stands for single pole double throw. On, on, not on on, off, on, but on, on, meaning it's on either on to one input or on to the other input. And certainly not on with like parentheses around it. Sometimes you'll see them described that way. That means like it's a momentary switch, like you hit it and it's only on while you're holding the button down kind of a thing. You don't want that. So I was able to find such a switch and I'm going to kind of show you what it is and how it works over at the electrical bench. So let's head over there. So here's the stuff we're gonna to use to complete this project. First, I'm gonna need some wire, obviously, and I will need to run three wires to make this work. So first, since this is a Winnebago, I've got yellow, that'll be our hot. The neutral will be white, and red will be the switched power that goes back to the pump, that's our, our, our load. And all of these are 14 gauge wire. The pump has a 10 amp switch, so 14 gauge wire should be able to handle 15 amps, so we're fine there. So that's those. I've also got a fuse holder. Now the pump already has a switch, I mean a fuse, but it's one of those glass tube fuses, and it is as far as I know is the only glass tube fuse in the entire RV. And so I don't want to carry, I already carry a whole bunch of these automotive blade fuses. So we're gonna replace that glass tube fuse holder with this automotive fuse. It comes with a 30 amp fuse, that's way too much. We'll put a 10 amp fuse in there. So we'll need that. And then we'll need, well, I've got some of these uh, Wago lever nut connectors. This will just help me make the connections inside in a much easier way. They're not waterproof, but this is going in a dry location, so it should be just fine. And that's just an easier because 
when you see the bench where I'm going to be putting, doing this wiring, it's kind of cramped in there and I don't want to have to like operate crimpers and stuff. This will just be a lot easier. And then finally, we need the switch itself. Now this came in three parts. First, the switch itself is VD40, V4D1-A60B. Okay, basically what it is, it's the SPDT on-on switch with an independent light input. Now the independent light input is kind of important. You would normally maybe use that in like a dash where when you turn the vehicle lights on, you want your dash lights to come on, you know, so you can see the lighted switch. You might use it for that. So the, the light is independent of the switching here. So then what we're gonna do is there are pins on the back and I'll try to put up like a close up of this pin out diagram. But basically there's one pin for power in and then there's two pins for power out depending on which way you have the switch flipped. Either one way will go to the pump, the other way will just come right back here. And you can see I've already made this tiny little jumper. So this is the power out from the switch right here and then it goes right into the power input for the light and then I'll hook up the, uh, the negative or the, the ground wire over on this side. And then this other pin down here, that one will be where the power will go out to the pump and then that's the power input there. That's how you're gonna wire it up. Now it comes in three parts. It comes, I got this from New Wire Marine. It's the first place I found that had one. Um, there's a little mounting hole thing that will go in the bathroom cabinet where I plan to put this switch and then the switch will just snap into that. There's the switch itself. And then they sell, and this is kind of interesting, they sell little decorative covers that you can get for the switch. So I got one that said bilge because the gulper pump is kind of bilge -y. But uh, I could have had them custom print one that said like gulpy or something like that if I wanted to actually label it. But they had one that said bilge and it would have been ready faster. So I just got that. Now I'm not gonna assemble this until we get it in place and ready to go, but there we go. Now. I can show you, I've got a 12 volt power source here, so give me a second and let me get this set up. And then I'll show you how the switch works and then, you know, how the light comes on when the switch is off kind of thing. Okay, so I'm just using this as a 12 volt power source and I've got it wired into the back of the switch. So power in and then power out is up here and then it goes right back to power in for the light and then this is wired to the neutral or negative. And the switch, I've got it on right now, but if I switch the switch off, the light lights up. If I switch it on, the light's off. So this is, hey, don't forget and run the sink because you've got the power to the pump off and you'll get your feet wet if you do. And then this is, okay, never mind, everything's okay, kind of a thing. And then, you know, we could do a little, uh, let me see if I can get some, uh, some numbers to show up here. So the switch is on right now. And you can see we've got 15 volts here on my will not die Radio Shack multimeter right there, 15.3 volts. And if I switch the switch the other way, we lose it. So there we go. And then the light's on again, as you can see. So that's how we're gonna wire it up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself up a, uh, I don't know, like a 10 foot harness or so out of uh, these three kinds of wire. And I'm gonna put it in some wire loom and then that's what we're gonna try to pull through the RV because I'm gonna put the switch in the bathroom, the front of the bathroom cabinet, and then the pump is in this cabinet there underneath the bench seat and it's, it's just a mess in there. But anyway, I'm gonna make up a harness and that's what we're gonna pull. All right, three wires. So my arm span is about six feet. And there's one. Yeah, I'm gonna say maybe that's enough. <laughs> We're just gonna stop there. We're gonna kind of tape this together every so often with little pieces of tape just to keep it sane. There we go, there's our three wires. Let me get some wire loom. Everyone needs a comically large box of spare wire loom hanging around. <laughs> really? 
Okay, so if you have an Echo, a first generation Echo, you won't have anything like this under here. This is, this is all my doing. But our pumps are in roughly the same place, right? So here is our gulper pump. This is, this is the patient, such as it were. And I want the switch back over here in the bathroom. I'm gonna put the switch in right about here. So it'll be like a nice bright light when you go to use any kind of water and the pump is not on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wire kind of back along that wall underneath the toilet. I'll have to go outside to do that. And then up through the pole that is on that pivoting wall. See, there's a pole here. There's a hole cut out behind the cabinet there or the counter in that pivoting wall pole. And then I'll pull the wires out there. That's, that's the idea. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if this works. All right, Steph, you're going to, while you're holding the camera, pull this wire gently until I stop you and we'll pull through as much as we can to this point. Then we'll have to get it under the toilet, but we'll worry about that next. Okay, stop there. Using a piece of string to fish this through under this toilet pan, and I've got it. Okay, so the wire is nearly run, and so now I'm gonna cut a hole where we're gonna mount the switch, and this is my little switch holder doohickey. So there's a rib right there, so I've gotta come over at least to like there. That You don't have to do this with a comically long drill bit, but you know, <laughs> it's more fun this way, right? I'm just gonna drill a hole and then I'm gonna cut this out with a handsaw. So if I've done this right, that should just pop into there and look like a finished hole. Fingers crossed. <laughs> look at that. Cool. All right, let's wire up the switch. So here's the switch and I've still got on that little jumper, but I took one end off just so I can feed it through there easier. So this is the neutral wire because it is white. Terminal. Ta -da. Okay. Well, these are heat shrink terminals. I might as well heat shrink them. Hold, please. Switch. Okay. This should just snap into place. Like that. Let me wire in this jumper. Tidy that up in a bit. Let's look at this other end now. So there's just a connector here, so I'm all about eliminating extra unnecessary connectors. So we're just gonna cut this right here. So all I need to do is yellow to yellow. Okay. And actually, I need to put in my fuse holder. So this has got a 30 amp fuse in it. That's way too big. This, as you can see, is a 10 amp fuse. So let's get a 10 amp fuse. All right. And then this. 
this right there. Boy, when these wire strippers work, they work great and they love this silicone insulator on the tinned wire. They just strip that stuff like nobody's business. Okay. Okay, now this time I'm using a three-way because this is the neutral for the light switch and we also need the neutral for the negative. I guess it's 12 volt, it's negative. Neutral for the, the pump, not this wire, which clearly says do not connect this wire. <laughs> we need this one. goes to the load center. Okay, so finished up the wiring. Here's what we've got. This is the positive and negative as it came into the pump from Winnebago. From the positive, we go into this fuse, which I have replaced with a 10 amp blade fuse instead of that glass tube thing. And then that goes out to the switch. This is the yellow that runs all the way out to the switch. Wires in the switch. We have a neutral, which comes back, or neutral negative, which comes back from the switch, is here, which is spliced in with the original negative from Winnebago, and also the negative from the pump. We also have a switched hot, or the load, that comes back there. So, if I've done everything right, we should have a couple things happen. First, if I turn this pump off, we should see the bilge light light up. Are you going to come get it? Can you get it? If I turn it off, look at that. All right. Warning, dummy, the pump's off. Turn the pump on before you run the, the faucet. Okay, great. Now, let's get some water and make sure the pump still works. I'm just going to pour this directly into the shower drain here, and we should hear the pump come on. Be worried there for a second. <laughs> okay, cool. You can see why we might want to shut that off if we don't actually need to listen to it. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up here. I've got some wiring to tidy up and strap down up front, and then uh, we'll wrap up. Okay, and that's about gonna do it. That, believe it or not, more or less went according to plan, and I did bleed, bashed a knuckle, so it's project. Um, anyway. Even if you don't have an echo with that pump that you need to silence occasionally, these uh, single pole dual throw on on switches with the light, they can come in handy in a number of other situations and they're really not all that hard to wire up. So hopefully that helps out. I will put a list of materials I used, even that super cool silicone wire and stuff. I'll put that in the post over on thefitrv.com. There will be a link in the YouTube description down below. And so if you're interested in some of the stuff I used and even this switch, which is kind of hard to find, click on over to the Fit RV and we've got links for you. And that's gonna do it for now. See you later. Bye.